Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to go more in depth about how to use gradient maps on iPad. We'll cover the menus in detail about RStudio, Clip Studio, and the two apps from Affinity, Photo and Designer. Gradient maps always function the same way, but their implementation inside the apps may differ. So let's get started. If you're watching this video, I'll assume you already know how a gradient map works. If not, you can watch a quick video I made to explain the basic principle of it. I'll put the link in the description and on the video somewhere. Okay, so since you know how they work, but maybe just you want to know where to access them and in which apps on iPad Pro, I'll go over the menus of every app I manage to use gradient maps with. Let's start with Clip Studio. Since this app is a direct port from the desktop program of the same name, it might be the most famous for digital drawing. You'll have to go to the Layer tab on the top menu, go to Correction Layer, and then Gradient Map. It'll open a window with your existing folders and gradients. From this window, you can tap on the little arrows under the gradient to move them and adjust which value is affected by the new color. When an arrow is highlighted, you can delete it by clicking on the trash can or insert a new one by clicking in between existing arrows. In the left menu with your gradients, you can save them as a new gradient by clicking here or deleting one by clicking on the trash can. In this window, you can also highlight an arrow with a color and go right here to change the color. When you're done, click OK. You can get back to this window by double tapping on the square icon of this layer. You'll also have on the wrench icon every option to share and import other gradient files but only from Clip Studio type files. Next is Art Studio. In this app, you'll need to open your layer panel, click the sun icon at the bottom, and scroll down to Gradient Map. It functions uh, the same way as before. You need to click on the gradient to access the gradient editor. You'll have all your stored gradients at the bottom, you can access one directly and then click Modify. The arrows and colors function in a similar way to Clip Studio. You can delete a color selected by tapping on it and clicking Delete. Yes, it's a button. And you can add one back by clicking in between arrows. You can change the color by clicking on the square icon in the color section. A nice feature in this uh, program is that you can share and import also GRD files, which are Photoshop standard gradient files. The plus icon at the top is used to save the actual gradient as a preset. And lastly, in Affinity Photo and Designer, the process is more annoying when you are used to standard workflows like before. You have to tap on the Settings tab beneath the Brushes tab, right here. If you go down in the menu to directly select Gradient Maps, maybe nothing will appear for you, because this is where your presets will be stored when you save a gradient, and you'll be able to open one with one tap only if you have one saved. So go back to Settings tab, and below you will scroll to find Gradient Maps. By default, Affinity offers me this disgusting gradient and you have to change it every time, which is why quickly creating a preset is a good idea here. Here you can see the interface is familiar but slightly different. You need to click on the gradient icon and you will have little circles. You can move them around just like in the other programs, but you cannot tap in between to add a new gradient, a new color. It will only change the position of the color selected. To add a new color, you need to click on the plus button, move it around and then change the color on, in the color wheel. 
this button will duplicate your selected color and this one will delete it. When you're done, click out of the gradient and you can add a preset. Now, if you go back to your effects panel and go directly to gradient maps, you can see we have this gradient saved. You can also click on other gradients to apply them there directly. And here you'll see your presets. You just need to tap one to add the layer corresponding. If you keep tapping between them, it will not add more layers, but will just keep changing between the layer already selected. And this is everything about gradient mass on these free apps. If you know any other iOS app with this ability, please let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to try it. I hope this helped clarify things concerning how to access these layer adjustments. Bye everyone and keep creating.